Hello and welcome to Janet's Craft Corner. Today we're going to be making the Home Tweet Home Birdhouse. As always, you need to get your general supplies. And this is also a great time to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos as they come out. In addition to your basic supplies, you need the colors that we're using today, and those are all listed in the description if you didn't buy a project kit. Now let's get started. But you're just going to get them sorted out here. Um, your home, your two homes and your tweet are black. You need to have six of these little dots right here. You should, there should have been seven in your thing. I had seven created on the board so that hopefully you would get at least six of them. This is going to be our um, center to our birdhouse. We're going to make that gray. And this is our wing for our bird. And then we've also got our two big pieces the um, leaf piece and our bird piece as well as our two checkerboard pieces that go on the top and the bottom of our um, birdhouse so we're going to start with the birdhouse itself and the birdhouse is yellow and so we're going to get us some yellow out here and basically you want to paint the middle of the birdhouse section um, you don't have to get all the way up to the edges on the top and the bottom because you've got the um, checkerboard pieces that are going to cover that up. But you do need to get out to the edges on the sides. And um, give you a little trick for when you're painting something like this. It's got that you're painting out to edges and you're trying, you want to try to keep your outer edges, the outside of your um, wood, as clean as possible because, you know, it looks nicer. If you paint from the middle of your piece towards that edge in this case the center hole and then I'm going to switch and go around to the outside edges then you will not have nearly as much drip on your edges so paint from the middle of your piece out to your edges and you will not get nearly the drip on the outer edges that you get if you paint from the outside edge in when you paint from the outside edge in it catches on the edge and you get a lot of drip. So remember that when you're painting here and remember you don't need to paint, like I said, down below the bottom. So you need to go to the you know, top of that strip there. And then um, same thing at the top, you just need to make it to the bottom of that checkerboard strip. So we're gonna do one coat on here. Yellow is one of those colors that it always needs two coats. I think there's anything I've ever done that didn't make it need two coats of yellow. So um, just get us a good coat on here. Okay, so there's our yellow, our first coat of yellow. And then we're going to not wash our brush off yet because we're going to do a second coat of that one. But while we're waiting here, we're going to... Um, switch over and since the white will also definitely need two coats we're going to do our white for this i use a very small well a small flat brush let's see this is a number eight brush and basically we're just going to do every other square and you can decide whether you want white or black on your outside one i think i'm going to do black on my outermost one so i'm going to come to the second one and do white and um just very gently come along those edges. You do not want to use a thick brush that'll go all the way across here because you have to worry about it spreading out and hit and crossing one of your two edges. Whereas now, if it spreads, it just spreads that into the middle. And so we're going to get along that line. And then we're going to turn it over and go along this line. Sorry, I don't talk as much when I'm painting along lines because I have to concentrate. And I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. So definitely have to concentrate a little bit when I'm doing that. And we're just going to do every other one. And on these ones out here in the middle, you just need to make sure you go at least as far as the edge would be. Um, you don't have to go all the way out to the outer edges because that's just where that um, leaf and flower piece is going to go. So we don't have to go all the way out to that. We just have to go as far as the edge would be. So basically down as far as your cut, your line, the um, engrave mark for the line is. That's all the further down you have to go on those. 
And watch when you're coming around that corner up there. Remember, this is your black one here, or your off one here in the corner. So this is the next one that needs to be white. Don't skip one. Okay, so there we've got our first coat of white on, and now we're going to go back and do our yellow again. So we're going to go back and put another coat on our yellow, and again, you know, remember to always come from the inside out to your edges. Makes it easier on you. Um, in this yellow, nothing of the, um, of the engraving really needs to show through clearly. It is just for letter placement with your home sweet home. So as long as you know, you can put it on pretty good and it, you'll still be able to see it enough to place the letters. Um. music <clears throat> shall I sing no Good. we don't need music that bad <laughs> wise choice yes 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 not a good I not a good look not a good Yes, I should say not a good sound. It is at seeing that. Go for it. I'll just <laughs> blank it out later. <laughs> oh, I think I'll pass. But suddenly I can't think of it. Thank you, anything to sing. Oh, you could sing cows and horsies. That's your song. Yeah, that's what put me to sleep. <laughs> but she, it's not supposed to put you to sleep. It's supposed to put the kids to sleep. Well, it often put me to sleep as well. <laughs> Okay, so now we're done with our yellow brush so it can go in the water. And then we're gonna go back and coat a second coat on our white. Looks like we're freezing up, but I'm going to go ahead and keep painting so I can hopefully get a good tape on BeLive and we can just post it because at this point I don't know what else to do. I'm kind of going back and touching this white up again with a little bit of a third coat. 
that's the beauty of acrylic. It dries fast enough that you can just come right back over a lot of it. Um, because I'm still a little light. I don't like it quite. I'm still seeing a lot of brush strokes. So, that's what I'm doing right now is just touching things up. You can look and see that might not all of mine are needing it, but some of them are. Okay, so that has all of my white done, so we'll do that over there. Okay, so then our next step is going to be, we're actually going to do our black next because, especially on this piece, it goes under pieces with glue. So I want to make sure, normally I do my black at the very, very end so I can touch up any edges that I might have messed up. But because it needs to dry enough to be glued, I'm going to go ahead and do it now. And again, I'm going to use a brush that's about that eight inch or that number eight. So we're going to start on the black. Again, we're going to do the same thing, just right along our little edges there. Make sure that we stay away from that edge a little bit so that it doesn't spread too much. It's always the challenge along these edges where there's two colors that touch. Don't do a lot of pieces that have this kind of thing because it makes for a challenge. Okay, my black squares are done. Oh, yeah, my black squares are done and I'm done with my black. Um, oh, I didn't cut any more of these. Done with my black brush. Now I'm going to go to black with a sponge because all of my little letters are black. And as we've talked many times before this point, there's a corner there. It's so much easier to do the letters with the sponge. You don't get the little um, edges that have too much paint in the corners and stuff you get really better coverage so it really is a lot easier it is hard to do like those um, checkerboard squares because it's really hard with the sponge to keep it sharp and you're going to see that here in a little bit because the swirly piece needs a sharp piece of the sponge but it's only a very small area so that we can probably pull it off I'm just amazed at how quickly letters paint with this method and how sharply they paint. I mean, it, it covers so well. Okay, there's that done. Now, this piece here is going to end up with something being glued on it. So I'm going to work on it next. So it um, first of all, we're going to do our outside leaves, which are in the darker of the two greens that you have. For this, I'm again going to use a small to mid-sized brush. And um, we're just going to, this piece is two pieces. There's a circle in the middle that's pink and the outside edges that are green. And it unfortunately didn't do a engrave there. So just um, kind of eyeball it. It's going to get um, the this piece over the top of it. So it'll be fine. Well, you shouldn't see that edge that you have to create there. And again, the engravings on this are just for placement, so you don't have to worry about being able to see them clearly. And this green is actually one that sometimes needs a little bit of a second coat, but it usually is a, it's, it just needs a little, so you can do it almost immediately, if not immediately. And that's what I'm going to do right now, is just kind of put a second coat on both sides, but I'm doing it immediately. It'll be fine. It'll be enough of a coat to make up the difference where it's just a little splotchy. 
And like I said, this is going to end up being covered with that swirly piece. So you're not going to see, this is going to be showing through the back. You're not going to see it a whole lot. We're going to do the lighter of our two pinks in the middle. Now. Okay, so get us a brush for that. And then again, we're just going to go right over it. I'm going to overlap just a little bit on that green that I just did. Not much, just enough to blend those two together a little bit. And paint our little circle. And again, you know, paint towards the outside of your edge so that you don't have to worry about your edges getting paint all over them. Okay, so there's that piece and we can wash that brush out. And then the other pieces that still need to be done so that they can dry. We need to do the light blue, so the lighter of our two blues. Let that dry, and then we're going to do our gray in the this circle here that's our gray. All we have in the gray is that little circle there. Now then, back to using our wonderful little sponges and I need to cut a new one up. I'm going to dab onto this gray because I didn't get it as thick as I wanted it. Thought I did and didn't. So we're going to do um, our darker blue. Okay, and then we're going to do the brighter of our pinks. And this is where we're going to have to try hard to do an edge. So we're going to do our pink. And at these two points, there's a little line at both points on either side of the circle. The outer floral fleurs, or whatever you want to call those little things, are green and the inner circle is the pink so at that point you want to try to make the pink go right up to that line but not over so when doing this i almost always do my two edges first so i can tell that i didn't mess that up you know i don't get going and then uh oh i screwed up and went too far and then do the middle and the rest of it but you just want to be right up against that edge but not crossing it and it's you also have to kind of watch on these outside edges making sure you don't hit your little loops off to the side this is a lot hard it's a lot harder with a sponge than with a brush to get that hard line but to paint these twirls with a brush is a lot harder so you just have to balance it and then now our light green and it's going to be these two outer swirls and all of those little dots and again do your edge there first coming up right up against that without going over it and then do the rest of it Okay, and now comes the fun part, the freehand stuff. This is the part I dislike the most about these crits. Okay, on our little bird, he needs a beak and an eye. So we're going to get the darker yellow you should have gotten. And we're going to paint him a little beak. And then you're going to do his eyeball in black. And I'm going to cheat. Sorry guys, my hand will not do that little circle. You guys are all still young enough to do it, but I have paint pens, so I'm going to use a paint pen to do my little circle. It is not that small a circle. You can do it with a... And then go back and get us another little coat of, on our little birdie here. On his little beak and then just do any touching up you feel like you need to do I'm... a 
Okay, so now we're ready to start the fun of gluing. So we're going to start with our bird house and we're going to drop our circle in the middle. It, it does not actually get glued. It is going to, the tweet is what's going to hold it in place. So make sure when you're doing your tweet, you cover areas that are both on the gray and on the um, yellow and you keep your piece flat while it's drying. So I'm going to put me some glue on here and, and put my T in place. You can still, you should still be able to faintly see your lines. And then my wheat. And then again, you know, make sure you're pressing there in the middle with that um, circle because that's is all that's holding that circle on is the top of the W E and the top the corner of the T. Okay, and then our little homes. Home at the top and home at the bottom. Now, before I do, actually, before I do my homes, I'm going to lay this on just in case it ends up being off a little bit. Oh, I missed a piece here. I missed a section. Need to make sure you do your little tops here. And I did mine black the last time. These little, your little rivet holes, because they're going to stick up above the black and white. But I did them black so they blend in pretty well. I always forget those when they have a piece that lays close to them. There. That will make them look good. Okay. Okay, so we'll do the bottom piece first to give that a few seconds to dry. Put our bottom piece on and line just line up our bottom edges basically. And line it up left to right. And now this is where I keep my black around because this didn't quite line up perfectly. It'll be okay because I can take my black and paint my edges. I'm going to re-glue that because I really moved it around and lost my glue. Oh, sorry. It's good enough for right now. But my little edges are not perfect and I'm not happy. And I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. Katie knows as well. Um, so I'm going to show you how I fix it in just a minute. But I'm going to first of all finish gluing all my parts. Need to touch up that guy right there. Don't you love it? I look over and I'm like, I didn't get an edge. So we're fixing it. Okay, now that we've got our letters on, we can put our little flower and our bird together and then put them on. And you can do it either way, but I prefer to put them together off to the side here and then put them on as a piece. Put our little wing on our little birdie. And then we'll do our little birdie. Now put our little swirl on to make our flower and leaves pattern. And your thing does only fit one way. Make sure you get it the right way. And then this is where your six dots go. To go out here on these edges, three on each side.
And then we're going to do our whole big leaf assembly onto our birdhouse. And there we go. Now all we have left to do is a little bit of cleanup stuff. And I told you I would show you what to do about those edges. Get a very small brush. And I don't know if this tells me what kind of brush. This is a 10. And some black paint. And then just very carefully, you want to come from the bottom up. Come up and see I've got the yellow showing through there. Just very carefully come up and coat that edge. And I'm going to do it all the way around on this here. I'm actually going to do it here too because I got some. It doesn't matter if your brush extends past your edge because the edge will hold it on there. And that'll keep, that'll make all those places where there's a little bit of a difference hide. Because they will now be painted the same black as the sides. Obviously, you want to be very careful when doing this because you really don't want to have to repaint areas. But see here, I don't know if you can, if there's any way you can see that I've got an edge here that's where that didn't quite line up. And this way, I'm going to cover that edge with the black. And then nobody's going to be able to tell that that edge existed unless they look up real close. And if they get that close and look, well, hey. They deserve to see the air. Well, I'm not sure it's an air. Hopefully yours lined up a little better than mine did. The first time mine lined up perfectly, so the laser just must have been off a little bit this time. And you can do this all the way around. I'm actually doing mine all the way around because my yellow I wasn't very neat with. Mm, I'm not going to do it on the bottom. It doesn't need it. But, so there you go. Oh, wait a minute. This edge of the bottom does need it. The bottom bottom didn't need it, but the sides do. And that's how you get rid of those little places where it doesn't quite line up perfectly. And there you go. We've created a home tweet home birdhouse. All we need to do is add our twine, which I'm actually not going to do right now because I've got some wet paint up there. But you just add your twine in your loops and hang it wherever you want in your home. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm glad that you joined us today and hopefully you will see you again.